All right, let's answer a couple of questions, Instagram questions. Um, for the first time, I don't know if there's going to be like a YouTube thing or a podcast thing or a who knows, or something that I just forget and never do again. Um, to the person who asked me, how come I lost the previous questions? Well, that's because it seems to be that Instagram sort of memory holds things if you don't look at them for however long, and I just couldn't find the questions. Um, my own tardiness and laziness is, I think, the answer. So um, I have a bunch of questions here, so let's have a look at them. Um, Celestial Effigy. Interesting name. Quite like it. Celestial Effigy. When did you start to learn the bass? Well, I never learned it. I'm a butcher of a bass player. Never heard you speak about it. Um, well, it was nothing to speak about, literally, for many years. Um, I suppose um, I started to play, butcher, mess around with the bass a long, long time. In fact, so long now that it makes me think that I should be an awful lot better at the bass. Um, must be 25, 30 years. Um, but I never really took it remotely seriously till maybe until Dread Sovereign started, and I was still pretty awful at the bass then. So it's in the last couple of years that I've gone from a really awful 2 or 3 out of 10 to maybe a competent 5, um, who on a good day could reach 5.5. Um, but that was never my intention. I always was going to play like Hellhammer Venom style. Um, but when I got a very cool bass, which is the bass that I have in 1979, Rico, uh, well, pre-BC Rich, this has kind of made me want to play a little bit better. So a little bit better. So um, that's what I play through. Um, 1979 bass with um, a orange 8180 head and an old Ampeg fridge from about the same year. Um, so, never heard you speak about it. Well, <laughs> it's, um, anyway, learn, never learned. N from Sue, you look great. Well, thank you, flattery will get you everywhere and you'll be invited to all of the, um, you look great, healthy lifestyle. Well, I mean, um, Yes and no. <laughs> I think everything in balance, or else you're just trolling me and taking the piss out of me, if so. Also good for you. Um, I think that, to be serious for a moment, um, playing sport, um, trying to get up and go to the gym most days, to do even just stretching and yoga when you get to a certain age, you should try and do that. Um, try not to do midweek drinking. Um, just, but it's playing sport, really, that I've always done. Um, which always sort of helped, I guess. And never having worked a day in my entire fucking life. Hands like a young Liberace. I think that helps. Pelle Yolander. Travelling to Dublin in November. What's some of the best pubs? Well, um, the Dublin pub is... The traditional Dublin pub is slowly closing down and becoming um, more and more rare. Um, sold out to these sort of horrible monoliths to modern extravagance and you know all the nice bars are not all but some of the nice bars are just disappearing um filled with um <clears throat> the kind of people that you don't want to be in a bar with anymore um i would recommend frank Ma frank ryan's one of the last really dingy kind of dive bar pubs uh, rock and roll owner you'll always cool jazz band playing in the corner really dark inside very very cool foggy jew is traditionally one of the um, hangouts from the old days from the 80s where you would have had um, you know uh, people handing out anarchist newsletters punk rock people um, two-tone people, ska people, metal people um, you know and just like well, and, uh, a transvestite dude in 1989 or 1992 all standing along in one line drinking pints together um, kind of melting pot of everybody in Dublin. For a foggy Jew is cool so Froggy Jew and Frank Ryan's, I would say, um, ah, there's, there's enough. Look around. J or Charvel, Charvel, um, Charvel's, very 80s thrash heavy metal guitars, aren't they? Young people don't listen to black metal on festivals today. And festivals today are full of old people. True. Um, somewhat true. 
It really, it really depends. If you go to, I mean, it depends on what you also mean by young people. If you mean teenagers, then yeah, it would seem that there is very few younger, younger people. I mean, if you go to Hellfest, you will see younger people. But I think this sort of spirit of independence that maybe existed 10, 20, 30 years ago is not the same thing. And also I sense that, I mean, it's a bit of a sad cliche, old man shouts at clouds thing, but young people aren't as interested in um, communal experiences and things like music as they used to be once upon a time. Um, not, I mean, there are some kinds of music which really can be strikingly old. Um, some heavy metal shows or an old goth show, Go to Sisters of Mercy or something like this, or um, say an older heavy metal band and, you, you know, you really will be struck by the fact that the audience is 40 to 55 or 60 and they don't, in some cities they have a bit of reinvention, but not always. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. I mean, if you think about the top 400, well, you don't have to think about it, but look at the top streaming artists on Spotify or whatever, which is predominantly listened to by, um, I think it's like 60% young women. Um, and it's clear that heavy metal, rock, guitar music just has no influence there, no purchase, no no statistics to speak of. Heavy metal festival culture is, I think it's alive. I think there's lots of cool different diversity you can go to. And you will see people there in their 20s, but um, young people don't listen to black metal. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to observe Spotify numbers. You will find that thrash bands who, could never hold, who couldn't even hold a candle to pulling as many people as a black metal band to a show um, are streaming 1, 200, 250,000 monthly listeners. Um, compared to some of the black metal bands, but I've seen them playing to 45 people. So, yeah, it's complicated, but there's certainly something to be observed in the fact that um, younger people aren't resonating with guitar music. That's, um, I think that that's clear. <clears throat> Bowercore, that's an interesting name. Has Promodial ever got funding via the Arts Council for tours, etc.? No, we never got anything from the Arts Council. We did apply for, um, as a band, we never got anything from the Arts Council. No, we applied for a couple of things and it just seemed to be a dead end. And also, at, so at one stage, the Arts Council's website was so um, obsolete in the sense that you had to download some very difficult file that every firewall past 2006 was like, no, not happening, and fill it out. And, it, you know, it would never, the, you could never type properly into it and, all sorts of really silly problems. You could also never go and speak to them and like have an interview and put your case. Um, and we tried to get some funding to go to Australia, to America before, apply for some things. And it seemed to be basically you would you'd more of a chance outside of Dublin if you're from Cavan or Louth or something like this, or Roscommon because they had um, they had their quota and they're giving it to you know they had to use up their yearly quota. Um, but very, I never really heard of many bands getting money from the Arts Council mainly poets, sculptors, um, stuff like this. I don't. I, none of our contemporaries, I don't think Crook on ever got any money or Bad Incarnate or anything either. So, uh, no. If you could see Bathory play a live set of 10 songs, which songs would you pick? Wow. I, that's a very hard question to just think off the top of your head. Um, but let's say Under the Runes, Bloodfire Death, Fine Day to Die, um, In Conspiracy with Satan... The Return of Darkness and Evil, Born for Burning, Enter the Eternal Fire. Um, dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Um, anything would do. Blood, Fire, Death. Oof. Through Blood by Thunder, Shores and Flames. Um, the list goes on and on. Wow, but you, uh, Dylan Barnett asked me that. That's a very hard thing to just speak off the cuff about. <laughs> and go, well, yeah, there's 10 songs up here. I'd like to see them opening with A Fine Day to Die, though. Um, and maybe closing with Run Road to Asabe. But the thing with Bathory is, I think that as the years went on, he got to a point, I think somewhere after Blood for Death, where he just realised he couldn't do it. I mean, I'm not sure the technolo technology was there for them to be able to really do the Hammer Heart, Twilight of the Gods era properly. And he certainly listened to his guitar playing on Requiem, which is kind of awful, and Nordland, and he seems to get worse from going up to Twilight of the Gods to down. Makes you wonder, as my friend Runa Eriksson, the very great blasphemer, said after pulling off the solo for um, Through Blood by Thunder, or I think, or Twenty or Mountain, we did in um, 
we did in a, a rehearsing for Twilight of the Gods for, and he was like, Corthon, this is not Corthon. Um, no idea if that's um, just our boy Runa speaking off the cuff, um, but Runa's accomplished guitar player, and he was finding it. He was like, fucking hell, this is under the Rune solo, you know? Um, hard to say. Either he just, you know, rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed till you get to Twilight of the Gods, and after it was just like, like blah, I don't give a shit anymore. Um, you know. But... I heard a rumor that he rehearsed once with Edge of Sanity guys to play once, so I don't know if that's true. I guess these things, you'll never know if they're true. He certainly rehearsed in, I think, 86 or 87 with Witch Hunter, which seems an odd choice. Um, but anyway, uh, they were rehearsing in Stockholm, maybe to play some shows. Apparently there's an album recorded there, uh, Fire Still Burning, Descent to Hell, with the songs on it. Um, nobody knows where it is, nobody's heard it, and I think it's gone to the grave with the boss. Um... But, yeah, we will never know. Peace of mind or Power Slave? Peace of mind. Um, Power Slave is, of course, a massive record. But for some reason, um, Peace of Mind, I think, is a bit darker, a bit heavier hitting. Um, it's got one of the greatest productions of all time. Um, they're both incredible, don't forget. I mean, it's like splitting nine and nine and a half or something like this. Um, I just find maybe uh, back in the village... Um, you know, lost for words. Yeah. The end of side one. Is it really as good as to die with your boots on? Uh, and where are we at the end of, where are we at the end of, um, peace of mind? We are die with your boots on. Uh, oh, come on brain. doesn't matter. Anyway, I go peace of mind. Um, but the difference is minimal. And as my friend Chris from Winterfell would say seven son of a seven son uh, not sure about that Cali Helveter what is the best gig you've ever attended fucking hell man that's um, that's complicated the best gig I ever attended um, Day Aside 1990 Morbid Angel 91 maybe Spring to Mind um, Sepultura for Beneath the Remains um, suicidal Tendencies, 89, Sabbat, 89. There, there are things when you're young, they form a huge impression on you. Um, I suppose they're the things that you remember the most. ACDC for Razor's Edge. Um, fucking hell. Woven Hand. So Woven Hand, a load of times 20 years ago, that was absolutely amazing. Um, Dead Can Dance in the 90s. Depeche Mode, about six years ago, was absolutely amazing. They're still amazing things. Um, very Again, very difficult to think off the top of your head. Crow Studios. How did you lose the last questions? Yeah, I lost them by don't know why. I went back to try and find them and they were gone. And do you like movies with gladiators in them? That's a very... <laughs> with gladiators in them. If that's a troll of a question, right? Um, yes, I suppose I do like movies with gladiators in them. The main one being Gladiator. A um, new album, ETA, it's going to come out on September the 12th. And it's called How It Ends. Um, that's about the most that I can say about it right now, but we're going to film a video at the weekend, so things are starting to move. And that was from Grog Weissen. Joshua 20B, Metallica or Megadeth? Um, songs from Megadeth, but overall, probably... Yeah, Megadeth. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, the, the biggest problem is, for me is this, is um, when it comes to Megadeth, Kill em All is better than Killing Is My Business. But I prefer songs on um, Peace Cells than Ride the Lightning. But you see, Peace Cells is iron superstitious. You know, Killing Is My Business has these these boots. So far as I go, what has anarchy? This bullshit cover on each of the first three Megadeth albums really reduces their impact. But so far as I go, so what? Um... I mean, Savarsi Good So What, or Injustice for All, Savarsi Good So What. Uh, what are we saying? Well, these are the same years, I guess, so maybe it's they're not lining up one by one. Um, you would compare Peace Cells and Master Puppets because they're both 86. Uh, take away answer, answer. I mean, I prefer my last words to any song on Master Puppets, but overall Master Puppets is, is a better record than Peace Cells, but, um, and Kill Em All is better than Killing. Yeah, it's... If you, uh, it's complicated. I'll go with Megadeth. 
because that's what I would have said when I was 13. Um, all right. Okay, here we go. Part two. Um, I'm sure I deleted some cool questions from the first one. Apologies if this becomes a regular thing. Well, then I will... Well, you can ask me again. Um, are, am I a Christian? From Piero26. No, I'm not a Christian. Um, I was not brought up a Christian. I was not brought up a Catholic. I was not brought up a Protestant. I was brought up um, in a sort of... in as much as you could be in Ireland in a secular way. Um, best black metal band from Norway so far is Burzum. Um, take it or leave that as an answer. Not interested in how you feel about that answer. Um, for me, musically, Burzum. Um, of course, there's A Blaze in the Northern Sky and Mistress Dom Satanis, I think, are better albums than Depth Song and Gone Var. Um, Dark Throne runs it pretty close. Under Funeral Moon, Panzerfaust, A Blaze in the Northern Sky, those three. Um, and of course, in the Nightside Eclipse, Diabolical Full Moon Mysticism, and 40 other albums. Um, yeah, I did a podcast about. Um, about underrated Norwegian black metal and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, look, say anybody can say what they want about that scene and, you know, discuss that fucking awful movie which just depicted them as dopey teenagers, you know, that which they were very young. But no, nope, the movie doesn't really get across um, the incredible scope and ability um, and just the the incredible the amount of incredible music that was coming out in that period in time, which belies the youth of the people involved, is incredible. There was so many great albums, but for me, it's Burzum. Specifically, Philosophem, obviously, Sit Taras. Um, could you go into detail on Kutor politics again, says Walls Joshua. Right, Kutor. He's a Kutor, is an Irish saying. Um, I think it really refers to uh, the kind of Irish politicians of the 70s and 80s and 90s, um, Charles J. Hawhey and his cronies. It basically means um, fill in your pockets, taking backhanders, taking bribes, um, accepting money from lobby groups quietly into the back of the hand when you meet in the pub over a pint and not saying it. And, and then, you know, whoever it is who gave the money gets the brand new road or gets the whatever. It's about, I suppose, in a way, it's kind of like the micro kind of like version of... Um, lobbying, you know, a, a nod and a wink and a oh, sure, I'll, I'll sort you out, you sort me out. And that's kind of, kind of how Ireland was when it was poor and parish pump politics is also another expression, which means whatever happens in the local parish, they're not really interested in what happens in the big cities or even in Europe or the EU or whatever. Um, and so cute whore politics really means um, line in your pockets, but doing it in such a way that, um, you know, people aren't really you're never really held accountable for it. People are not really that judgmental of it because they sort of say, they sort of consider, oh, well, well, sure, fair play to him. He did what he had to do. Um, and sure, didn't he get that new GAA pitch built or whatever, you know? Um, but it's it's actually not cute whore. It's whore, H-O-O-R. I think it means the same thing, but it kind of... I'm not sure it means whore, like, you know, <clears throat> that word means. It's cute whore. And it sort of means a kind of political smartass, working the back channels, getting the little bits for himself, you know. Um, it's a very Irish phrase, and it really, you should nearly really need to kind of, it belongs in the kind of Scrap Saturday, which is the pre-Father Ted Dermot Morgan, the much missed and loved Dermot Morgan. Um, who really stuck his neck out in the 1980s and did this political um, <clears throat> parody show called Scrap Saturday, where he kind of, in as much as Ireland could, held uh, politicians' feet to the fire in a way that's completely lacking from modern um, mainstream media, or whatever you want to say, even though it was comedy. Anyway, cute whore. Cute whore. Good question. Strange question. <clears throat> what podcast, YouTube channels do you follow or recommend? Um, Crow Studios. At them because I'm looking at my phone. Um, the ones that I like at the moment, I like uh, History Daily. But about the Cold War, I like one called Empire, which is about um, the birth of Empire, the East India Company, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's done by William Dalrymple. Surname, I think.
Ben Noiser, um, which is absolutely amazing. Um, Conversations with Coleman, uh, I, I like that a lot. Um, he's 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 excellent. Coleman Hughes, um, brilliant. Um, I like Unheard because I'm a Jim Bro podcast bro. Oh, sorry, that's Modern Wisdom, isn't it? Unheard, I think is great. Uh, Modern Wisdom, Jim Bro, podcast bro, got a podcast bro. Uh, West Cork. Audible Original is possibly the greatest podcast I've ever heard. Um, it's got a soundscape to it about, which is very like a sort of 1950s radio show. Really, really brilliantly done. Um, what else have we got here? The Boys Cast, which is proper, you know, um, talking politics, the history of ideas. Fall of Civilizations is absolutely, without a doubt, one of the most amazing ones. I like Walkins Welcome with Bridget Fedesey. Um, lots of football ones in our time. Um, more talking politics. Seven Deadly Sins with Stephen Fry. Um, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, which is fairly typical. Dan Snow's History Hit. Um, making sense. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, an awful lot of politics, history kind of uh, channels. YouTube channels? Ah, less so. I've become tired of flicking through YouTube so much. Um, <clears throat> but... There's some great podcasts. So I would recommend Dictators and Empire for the moment. That's what I'm working my way through. 100, 200 episodes um, of those. Live in the future or in the past? Um, well, right now, the way things are going, um, could we go back 10 years? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, that's a very strange question. Um, not something you'd really get asked in interviews very much. Um, I mean, if you're asking me what I live in and era of the past. I mean, everybody says, oh, ancient Greece or ancient Rome. Um, yeah, this would be pretty interesting. Maybe life during the Renaissance in Florence or something. I don't know. But then a lot of medieval previous life was brutal and ugly. And if you're in the wrong place, you could just be clubbed to death if you're outside the castle walls. Um, and the future? I mean, look, I mean, suppose realistically, we live in... Um, very indulged, pampered times, and would you, as a you know person who lives in 2023, survive in 1623? I'm not sure you would have the wits about you. Hard to say. Can we just go back?